Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. Do you have golden eagles and you don't know what to do with them? Are you looking for some ideas on how most effectively to spend your in-game cash? If so, this video is for you. I've compiled my top 5 ways plus one bonus tip for how to most effectively spend golden eagles that I have learned over the decade that I've played War Thunder. There are plenty of pitfalls and ways of golden eagles in War Thunder, so if you want to check out my top 5 list for the worst ways to spend GE, I've linked that video in the comments and description below so that you can also have an idea of the the worst things to spend your GE on. Either way, this list is in no particular order, so bear that in mind as I go through it. That said, let's get into it. Number one, premium vehicles. As you may have guessed, one of the items on this list is premium vehicles. The simple reason is because they have permanent RP and SL bonuses attached to some of the best and most interesting vehicles in game. With some premium vehicles such as the Harrier GR1 and TAM2 IP, you can grind through essentially an entire tech tree, all while basically getting two times the RP and about an extra 50% or so SL. This is permanent too, as unlike a premium account, these bonuses will never go away. Once you purchase a premium vehicle, you keep it, and the great bonuses that come with it forever. Oftentimes, premium vehicles that cost Golden Eagles are less expensive than their premium pack vehicle counterparts that you can purchase on Gaijin's website store. Additionally, there are plenty of sales throughout the year as well as some discounts that you can get simply for logging in, though the sales tend to be a lot bigger. That said, these are the perfect time to purchase premium vehicles. If you want info on when these sales occur, I have a War Thunder calendar video linked below in the comments and description, so check it out. Now for number two, when you're getting close to unlocking a modification for a vehicle, especially if you're within about 10 GE or so and it's a higher BR vehicle, such as maybe 8.0 BR or higher, consider using GE to unlock the rest of that modification. Not only will it unlock the modification early for you, but it also purchases the mod, making it so that you no longer have to use Silver Lions to buy it. Some modifications, such as those for top tier vehicles, will oftentimes cost an excess of 25,000 or even 30,000 silver lions, which if you can unlock that mod early plus get it for a few GE only, it's well worth it. For example, buying 11,000 silver lions in War Thunder will cost you 30 golden eagles. So if you can substantially beat that general ratio when purchasing a mod, you are in the clear. Conversely, if you're in a low BR vehicle, such as something maybe 4.0 BR and lower, try not to do this unless you're within about maybe 5 or so GE from unlocking a modification, as mods at those BRs tend to be much less expensive than higher BR mods in terms of silver lions, all while actually costing more GE per RP than those in higher BR vehicles. Now for number three, crew skills. This is a very unglamorous use of Golden Eagles, but it helps tremendously and is arguably the most effective. In short, crew skills will take your vehicles from being nearly unusable to being top of the line. And the great thing with crew skills is that they transfer between vehicles of the same type. For example, if you have a level 100, level 27, or whatever level of ground crew, every single ground vehicle that you put in that slot will benefit from the enhanced capabilities of that crew. That means that you will typically have a better weapon reload, turret traverse, and more for every single vehicle that you crew to that crew spot. For me, I would recommend using the 1000 GE if you have it, as it's the most efficient and it will fully research most relevant crew points for, for example, aircraft, and will also knock out a huge amount of crew skill for ground and naval vehicles as well. 100 GE worth of crew skill is also very good to spend in this way, as it will still get you through enough crew levels to make you reasonably more effective in combat versus, for example, an untrained crew. You can actually knock off a large reload time just by getting 100 GE worth of crew skill. Oftentimes, crew skills will mean the difference between life and death in a match, so if you ever feel like you're on the cusp of greatness, it's probably because your crew is just a bit too weak. This is a good way to fix that. Fourth, additional crew spots. Additional crew spots are a great way to not only diversify a lineup, such as allowing you to bring situational vehicles into a match like TDs, SPAA, and if you play Air Arcade, maybe Bombers, but they can also make it so that you don't have to buy a ton of vehicle backups to be able to continue playing in a match if your vehicles have died. Having 8 crew spots is essentially the same, although much less costly, than having 4 crew spots that you continue 
continuously have to purchase backups for. Unlike pretty much all other things on this list, however, there is a soft limit on how much you can actually purchase. What I mean is that, while purchasing one, two, or even three extra crew spots for GE is certainly very useful, especially if you like to play Air Arcade or Ground RB, you end up seeing diminishing returns. For example, while having a sixth or even a seventh crew spot available may be very nice for many people, an eighth spot may go largely unused, with a ninth spot being largely unnecessary for most people. Further, buying additional crew spots will also help to manage all of the vehicles that you have crewed by spreading them out over more slots. Trust me, it is a lot more difficult to manage four crew members with about 80 vehicles each than it is to manage six, seven, or eight with far fewer vehicles each. For number five, Battle Pass. Regardless of the arguable tumble in quality that the rewards for Battle Pass have received since its debut, Battle Pass in War Thunder remains quite possibly the best deal in game. With the ability to earn between three and four typically good premium vehicles just for playing the game. As I write this, the top level vehicle reward is the Object 248, which, while not amazing, is still a very good tier four 6.3 PR heavy tank with a great cannon, which means that you can research through rank five Russian ground with no RP penalties, which is amazing because rank 5 Russian ground is incredible. That vehicle plus two or three other premium vehicles and many hundreds of thousands of Silver Lions, extra backups, war bonds, of which can actually be used to purchase other premium vehicles on top of the rewards in the Battle Pass, which means that you actually have something more like four to six premium vehicles if you include the war bond premiums and more. You might not like to hear it, but you really can't get much better of a deal for just 2,000 Golden Eagles in War Thunder. They really did a great job introducing Battle Pass, even if, again, its quality has degraded over time. Now, with that said, let's get into the bonus tip, and you may have noticed something absent from this list, and there's a good reason for that. The bonus tip is premium time. This one might sound a bit weird to say, but there's a reason why it's just a bonus tip and not a main tip. Basically, buying premium time on Gaijin's website is less expensive per unit of premium time, and you can buy that with real money. In game through Golden Eagles, you end up spending the equivalent of more money purchasing premium time than you would just by going to Gaijin's website store. This isn't to say that premium time is a bad use of Golden Eagles, because it is still an amazing use of Golden Eagles, and if spending Golden Eagles is your only way of getting premium time, then go ahead and do it. It's not like you're saving a ton of money typically on the website store, but it is a bit noticeable, and you will end up saving a decent amount over years if you end up playing that long. Premium time would likely have been number one on this list if it wasn't for that pricing discrepancy between the in-game store and also the website store, which still makes it more than worthy of being a bonus tip. So really, there's still kind of six tips here, but again, if you want the most efficient way to buy premium time for War Thunder, just go to Gaijin's website and you should typically be able to get a better deal there. Now, with that bonus tip out of the way, I just want to say thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below and if you have additional tips that could save your fellow players some money. Also, please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, as it helps tremendously to stand out in the YouTube algorithm. Either way though, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.